One of the most important pieces of success that helped skyrocket the Sega Genesis to the top of the North American market were its sports titles. Sega started early with offerings from all the major sports like soccer, basketball, baseball, football, and golf. They powered these games with endorsements from popular celebrities, usually the top coaches and players during that time. It wasn't long before they spread out into other sports, like tennis, boxing, and a number of collegiate level offerings. These games grew in complexity, picked up the official licenses for players and leagues, and grew into a huge moneymaker for Sega. It was incredible to see what Sega was doing too. Some of these games featured full commentary while you played, no small feat for a cartridge-based title. When Sega announced their new CD add-on, I had visions of their sports games getting even better. Better sound, better commentary, better special effects. Hell, I expected more of everything with all the storage space and the extra horsepower of the Sega CD scaling and rotation hardware. As the games came out, what I was seeing was a very clear pattern that Sega had no intentions of supporting the Sega CD the same way with sports games. Even the third parties didn't support the Sega CD as I had hoped. That leads us to today's video covering sports titles the Sega CD did receive and how they turned out. I've got over 20 games for you in this one, so let's get started. Up first is Bill Walsh College Football from Electronic Arts released in late 1993. Aside from the addition of video footage of Walsh talking about football, some college fight anthems, and some additional sound effects, this is pretty much what was released on the Genesis four months earlier. Funny enough, it's also the only football game from Electronic Arts on the Sega CD, as the Madden games never materialized in any form. It's still fun, supports four players, and scratches that itch for American football. But I have to confess I would have much rather have had an NFL product and maybe a fully scaled field and stadium. If you already had the cartridge, there is little here to make this edition stand apart. Touchdown! In the latter half of 1994, Tecmo released Captain Tsubasa, a cinematic sports adventure that had a load of story cinematics, voice work, and an epic soundtrack. It was only released in Japan and is surrounded by a huge language barrier, but I just love the old school Tecmo look. The entire game is essentially played through animated panels where you choose your actions. It's as different as sports games get, and a shame it didn't come west back then. If you can read Japanese or don't mind fiddling with a translator, give it a try. I was quite smitten with its setup and premise. In 1992, Sega released Pro Baseball Super League CD for the Mega CD. This was an update to Super League, which many of us knew as Tommy Lasorda Baseball in the United States. Here it uses teams from the Nippon Professional Baseball League, but mostly retains a similar look and feel. The batting is notably harder, however. Thanks to a really fast pitching animation, you don't want to play this one with any input lag. I had a heck of a time starting with it and it took three or four innings before I had any real success. As you probably guessed, it was only released in Japan and was heavily criticized for its very plain presentation and rather simple play cinematics. It does have a great umpire voice that is extremely aggressive and fits the gameplay perfectly. Not bad, but another one that didn't stand out from what you could already play on the main console. The following year, Sega was back with Igawa Suguru no Super League CD, a follow-up that sported an endorsement from a popular player in Japan. 
This one makes some slight changes to the visuals, adds dual Sega Tap support for 8 players, and brings back the Nippon Professional teams. I enjoyed this a little more, but still have to admit it comes off really weak for the platform. No real special effects using scaling, no great animation across the stadiums or crowd. They even took away the cool umpire voice from the first one, replacing it with a much weaker one that sounded much less imposing. Sega could have done a lot more with this series, especially since it had two tries with it. As it is, it's basically just an audio upgraded Tommy Lasorda baseball with Japanese teams. And that game was four years old by this point. Late 1994 gave us ESPN Baseball Tonight, a Sony ImageSoft release that was based on the Park Place Productions developed Genesis port that was released five months earlier. And good lord does this garbage play terrible. The ball moves funny, the bat never seems to connect correctly, and the camera never changes to an outfield view. You play from the same view no matter what. It makes fielding an absolute chore, and you even have to throw the damn ball back to the pitcher after the play is over. Aside from some new music and video snippets, this is the cartridge version, for yet another simple port of a game that was available earlier. Even the ESPN commentary is weak, and not much more than the speech that was already in the cartridge. This was a swing and a miss on an epic scale. Take an already bad Genesis game, and then port that crap to the $300 Sega CD. It was a steaming pile if there ever was one. It had the official teams, but little else worth noting. First and second. Strike one. 0 oh and 1. Strike two. 0 oh and 2. Back, 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 back. Gone. Sony ImageSoft was back again in 1994 with ESPN National Hockey Night, a four-player game that I found to be quite decent. The gameplay felt smoother and more responsive than the cartridge it's based on, and I appreciated the additional sound effects. It also has two camera modes that drastically change how it feels, a great addition I wish more sports games had used. It has the NHL license, the players, and the full season that can be saved. After the disaster that was Baseball Tonight, it seems Sony had righted the ship and was on course to provide some great sports gaming for the Sega CD. Turns out I was premature with my expectations because Sony dropped another deuce on my Sega CD in 1994 with ESPN Sunday Night NFL. I really appreciated the field and player zooming here, but the cartridge version did it as well, so it's not hardware scaling using the Sega CD. The woeful gameplay is a smattering of dropped passes and short runs in between the interceptions and fumbles. It just plays and moves so awkwardly, and none of the features ever come close to the Madden games. The ESPN presentation is nice, and it's cool having Berman and Patrick on board, but the gameplay just doesn't cut it. Ringler Studios and Absolute Entertainment assisted on development, and it shows in every way. The only positive of the CD release is the fact you don't have to listen to the awful gems driven music of the cartridge. Touchdown! 
Sony ImageSoft released its last sports offering in 1994 called ESPN NBA Hangtime 95. This one was completely different from the prior Sega CD releases. It's not based on a Genesis cartridge at all. It uses the scaling of the Sega CD's hardware, and it's not a simulation. Instead, this is a half-court, two-on-two NBA Jam-style title that uses real teams. It's rough in places, but I really enjoyed it. It's very unique, and at the time, you craved anything that used your Sega CD's hardware. The gameplay could be faster, and the scaling isn't buttery smooth, but it plays well enough that getting four players together is a real blast. There's also a world tour mode that goes to other countries and uses fictional players, a great diversion from the main game. I enjoyed it and very much appreciated that Sony finally did something different with its Sega CD titles. Digital Pictures released Prize Fighter in 1993, a full motion video boxing game, and I use game very loosely. It's surrounded by an uninteresting story about an underdog called Kid Climbing the Ranks. You'll recognize a number of character actors from other movies, the blonde chick from the original Halloween, and even Michael Buffer got roped into doing the announcer. But the gameplay is just terrible. Basically, you wait for certain animations to block or punch in constantly looping video. Nothing lines up, nothing feels cohesive, and you can wail away on the punch button while your opponent just stands there. There's no aggression to the gameplay, and you are stuck just waiting for your turn to respond. The windowed black and white video ain't bad, but the rest is a low blow that deserves disqualification. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is over. The winner by knockout victory, George Honeyboy Hernandez! I told you you were a punk! That's right! You know what takes it to him? We're going home, we get ready for the next one! Many people mistake 1994's FIFA International Soccer for the Sega CD as a simple port of the Genesis version. Developed by Extended Play Productions and published by Electronic Arts, the Sega CD version actually has a number of improvements. Aside from the expected sound enhancements and full motion video, you also get new animations, new moves, and a much improved AI. These teams are smarter and play harder. It doesn't do anything visually special using the Sega CD, but it is a notable improvement nonetheless. If you love the cartridge, you should really get into this one. It also keeps the four player support. When Joe Montana's NFL football released for the Sega City in 1993, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Developed by Malibu Interactive of Batman Returns fame, I loathe this game on a level only hell itself can understand. It started so promising. It has a graphics presentation that is using the scaling of the Sega CD for every player on the field. But that somehow means everything is pixelated to hell, and the movement is choppy and unresponsive. To make matters worse, the speed of every player is the same. You might as well make your linemen wide receivers, because they all move at a snail's pace. The AI is horribly broken. All sports games have those plays that work most of the time, but the defense here falls for the same crap over and over without hardly trying to change up its strategy. It sounds bad, the video is crap, and I'm sorry Joe Cool had to put his name on it. The Genesis cartridge for 1993 is far and away superior to this in every single way. I would have rather have had that ported to the Sega CD than this travesty. Sometimes a sports game is just too complicated for its own good. 
That was certainly the case with 1994's Lynx The Challenge of Golf. Developed by Access Software and published by Virgin Interactive, this has so many on-screen options it needed Sega mouse support to smooth things out a bit. Setting up a shot can be exhausting because it all needs tweaking. Go in without any kind of preparation and you'll spend the majority of the game well above par. The loading makes all of that worse because many options require a reload, plus the loading in between hits. I can see golf diehards loving this, but for the rest, this one will grate on your nerves instantly. That'll play on the green. Player one. NBA Jam for the Sega CD was released roughly nine months after the Genesis version in 1993. Developed by Iguana Entertainment and published by Acclaim, it was a very decent port of the arcade original. It updates the rosters from the Genesis, includes better voice samples and music, and keeps the insanely fun four-player gameplay intact. I would have liked to have seen the scaling of the arcade, but it's a nitpick considering the gameplay remains so smooth. What else is there to really say? It's NBA Jam, and NBA Jam is always fun and a good time. You can save your season and stats to the Sega CD's internal memory, and it has a ton of codes to add everything from a T-Rex to Bill Clinton. It's a shame Tournament Edition never was released for it, but this one is still a winner. Dynamic Country Club is a golf game done by Sega themselves and released in 1993. It's based on an arcade release done for the System 24 and has a polygon play field. This one plays a lot easier than the Lynx game we went over earlier, but it can still be difficult to tell where your ball is in relation to where you want it to go. This can be really tough on the green itself because the putts are so unforgiving. I did enjoy this though and thought with a little more playtime, I could get good enough to shoot under par. It was only released in Japan so there is a small language barrier in the options, and you won't be able to understand the course descriptions or your caddy's advice unless you speak the language. Digital Pictures was back in 1994 with another full motion video stinker, Slam City with Scottie Pippen. The story here has you playing one-on-one -on -one basketball with various personalities until you have enough clout to go against Scottie Pippen himself. The gameplay is the typical terrible looking overlay of sprites against full motion video that doesn't match up and relies on random events entirely too often. The acting and sets also has that unmistakable 80s porn quality to them. Kind of like another film crew came in right after this one, and the same folks made a very different kind of adventure. There's ridiculous trash talking, guys harassing women, and a general feeling like nobody is taking anything seriously. I thought Prize Fighter was rough, but this is hands down the worst game tied to the sports genre on the Sega CD. For those of you interested, there was a 32X CD version of it as well. Man, I almost broke a sweat running points on you so fast. You got beat down bad, man. Don't worry about me, Ace. I've got a ride. I went into NFL Football Trivia Challenge thinking this would be a complete waste of time and came away enjoying it quite a bit. It was done by a company called CapDisc and released in late 1994. It's all done in a format very much like a real NFL game, except you use questions to gain yards and score points. Answer correctly and you move the ball down the field. Miss the question and you go to the next down. It's actually quite fun and the ability to pick a difficulty level makes sure most people can enjoy it. 
On Rookie, it even gives you visual clues with each question. This was a major surprise and one of the better uses of the Sega CD, a hidden gem for NFL fans. The San Francisco 49ers play their home games at what stadium? Touchdown, Bears. I was very confused when I first saw NFL's greatest, San Francisco vs. Dallas, 1978 to 1993. It was developed by Park Place Productions and published by Sega, and it looked like another simple full motion video title. Except it's even simpler than that. Here you play the coach of either the 49ers or the Cowboys, picking plays that randomly show video clips of real life players from the two teams. Again, nothing matches up visually. You can be on the 40 yard line and get a clip of a play happening 10 or 20 yards away. Clips play repeatedly so you begin to know the outcome before it even finishes. There were only two teams limiting its appeal greatly. I'm not really sure who this was made for, honestly. These teams were big rivals in the 80s and 90s to be sure, but being locked to essentially playing the same contest every time is really off-putting. If you played it once, you saw everything there was to see. Another complete misfire from Sega of America. First down. Steve Young now awaiting the snap from center. Looking over the defense. He's back to pass. Pass to Rathman. He takes it in in heavy traffic and is brought down. NHL 94 was a classic game of hockey released in 1993 and developed by High Score Productions. When Electronic Arts opted to do the Sega CD version, they added a bunch of full motion video footage of real games, new sound effects, new music, and new digitized voices. It took an already fantastic Genesis game and made it better. It also kept that great four player support with the four way play. It's true they could have done more to spruce up the visuals with some Sega CD specific features, but when a game is so well received already, why mess with a good thing? NHL fans should love this. Sensible Software was responsible for 1994 Sensible Soccer. It was known as Championship Soccer 94 in the United States, and I went into this expecting to absolutely hate it. Boy, what a shock I got, because this game is awesome. Don't let the tiny sprites make you think it's anything less. The gameplay is fast, smooth, and feels great. It's got a ton of teams and the sound effects to go with it. Passing and shooting really come off as second nature, and I found myself playing it long after my capture was done. It was never released on cartridge in North America, but there is one in the PAL regions, so you have two ways to play this gem. Three if you count the one for the Sega Game Gear. Amiga and Atari ST fans familiar with the series should love this version as well. Tiertex and U.S. Gold joined forces in 1994 to give a support of World Cup USA 94 for the Sega CD. It's based on the cartridge original that followed the 1994 FIFA World Cup. I really wanted to like this one, but I found it notably more difficult to work with after Sensible Soccer. It's almost too fast for its own good, and the AI is constantly stealing the damn ball and kicking it out of bounds. It also has one of the worst options menu in the history of games ever. It uses pictures for everything, and often you have no clue what you're looking at. This is the only game in this episode I had to break out the damn instruction manual just to get a game started. The visuals are nice enough and the sound is fine, and it can be fun once everything is going smoothly, but that overbearing AI in the awful menu makes this one tough to enjoy.
1993 brought us WWF Rage in the Cage from Sculptured Software and Acclaim. This Sega CD title is based on the Genesis cartridge, WWF Royal Rumble, but now has a new roster, some new modes, and a number of notable features. Straight away you have the exclusive steel cage matchup that locks wrestlers inside and they must climb out to win. There are standard single matchups, no disqualification brawl competitions, and a tournament mode to see who the king of the ring is. There's tons of new full motion video and voice segments that highlight the personalities of the WWF talent, and the ring introductions are worth the price of admission all by themselves. Unfortunately, this is missing the tag team and Royal Rumble modes completely, a curious decision since it's on CD. They even included tag team competitors in the roster, with no way to actually use them in a match together. It's fun and if you enjoyed the cartridge games, this will augment those nicely, but as a standalone product, you can't help but feel a claim could have given us more. It's kind of bare bones, considering the technology. Playing these Sega CD sports games gave me a new perspective. A few I didn't have much experience with, and I came away enjoying them far more than anticipated. But my overwhelming opinion was that Sega and its third parties really did the Sega CD dirty. Most of this stuff was simple cartridge ports with a few new features, some added sound and music, or added some hideously grainy video that added nothing to the gameplay whatsoever. Really, the biggest failing was from Sega themselves. Where are all the great sports games from the Genesis lineup? Where was Greatest Heavyweight CD? World Series Baseball CD? Where were the games using the hardware features of the Sega CD, like scaling and rotation? And the few times Sega did try something new, it ended up being a disappointing failure like the awful Joe Montana NFL football. While the Genesis itself was flooded with exceptional sports offerings, the Sega CD played second fiddle and had a fraction of those options. I guess it was much like the library itself. There were a few notable exceptions, but overall what we got just never really took advantage of the Sega CD or its technology. For those looking for recommendations, I strongly advise taking a look at Sensible Soccer, NFL Football Trivia Challenge, and ESPN Hangtime 95 as excellent options. If you want something that is based on a solid cartridge release with better sound, NBA Jam, NHL 94, FIFA Soccer, and Bill Walsh College Football will satisfy your sports cravings. It wasn't all garbage, but man was the Sega CD underutilized to the extreme. I can't help but feel many of these games should have been so much better. I'm Sega Lord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.